Hello and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at the best types of studio headphones for your home recording and mixing. As you gradually get together equipment for your home recording studio setup, a good set of studio headphones will be almost certainly one of the first things you purchase. And here I'm not going to run through a series of products and make specific recommendations. What I am going to do is look at why you need at least one good set of headphones, the different types available, the difference between closed back and open back, things to look out for, some of the benefits and pitfalls of using headphones in your home recording studio. I'll post links below to some of the industry standard headphones in each category at various price points. So you can go and check out the reviews and see which ones might suit you depending on the type you're looking for, your recording needs and your budget of course. If you're new here then I post regular videos on home recording studio setup particularly aimed at beginners and newbies. If that sounds like you then do subscribe to my channel and press the notification bell that way you'll be the first to see my home studio tips and tutorial videos as soon as they go live. If you've got any questions or comments post them below. I do read them all and they help me decide what kind of content and videos I should make next to help you out with your studio setup. Give the video a thumbs up if you like it, that will really help me out. And now let's go and learn about studio headphones. There are two main kinds of over the ear headphones, open back and close back. Each has benefits and each has drawbacks. Most headphones are closed back or circumoral, which basically means the outer part of the headphone cups have a hard enclosure. For example, the Sony MDR7506s. Open back headphones leave the back of the headphone cup open. For example, these AKG K702s. So far, so simple. But what does it mean? The small speaker drivers in headphones emit sound in both directions, towards your ears, directly into your head, and away from your ears out towards the rest of the world. Closed back headphones largely aim to block the sound aimed towards the world. Open back headphones let this sound largely go free. Closed back headphones are designed to isolate you from the outside world. It's just you and your music. The downside is the music is a lot more in your head sounding. It's less of a band in a concert hall and more a band in your head. However, this makes closed back headphones the best choice for monitoring and tracking while you are recording. You will get a lot less bleed or leakage of your backing track being recorded on, say, your vocal track. The problem with open back headphones is that everyone can hear what you're listening to. If you try to use open back headphones to monitor while recording, then you will get much more bleed onto your recorded tracks. In other words, you'll be able to hear some of the backing track on the vocal track. So I'm going to demonstrate that now. I am all set up to go. I've got my microphone ready to record me. And I've got a backing track that I want to record myself along with. So what I'm gonna do is just create a track, arm it for recording, it's picking up my voice. So I'll put my open back headphones on. So I will be monitoring the backing track through these headphones and then I'll record myself on top of it and we'll see what I pick up on the vocal track along with my voice. Okay, so the backing track has started and if I wanted to sing along on top, which I'm not going to do here, then that is what I would do. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pause for a minute and you can see how much of the backing track you can hear. And that's because I'm monitoring using open back headphones. They are not isolating the backing track as much as they could. So what I'm going to do is do a quick swap. So exactly the same scenario as before, only this time I'm going to be monitoring the track through my closed back headphones. And I will pause for a bit so that you can hear what the backing track sounds like through these. Okay, so the backing track has started and I'm talking over the top of it. So the question is, how much of the backing track can you hear on this vocal track compared to the last one? Now I'm going to have a look at closed back versus open back headphones, apart from that obvious difference of the isolation. One thing you've got to be aware of with 
closed back headphones is that that isolation can have an unwanted side effect. While you're recording, you are more cut off from unwanted sounds such as foot tapping, shuffling, rustling. So it can take a bit of practice to get a good headphone recording technique. The other problem is they can make you feel very closed in and a bit nasal. And you'll have heard in those examples that I just gave that when I got the headphones on, I was talking that bit louder. It might be a good idea to pipe your backing track through one channel and just have one cup over your ear. You'll have to just practice and see what works for you. Open back headphones sound significantly larger and less closed in than closed back headphones. They're just more open sounding. They're less like music beamed into your head and more like music in a room. In other words, they're more realistic. So for mixing, generally open back headphones are preferable although this is a bit of a matter of personal choice the disadvantage of using open back headphones for mixing is that you have any ambient sound going on around you in the room while you are mixing you're less isolated from it so it may end up interfering with your mix or it might sort of distract you while you are mixing because you're not so isolated from the things that are going on around you whichever headphones you're looking at and when you are comparing make sure you study the frequency frequency response. For mixing and editing, you want a good even frequency response so you can hear the top end clearly and though the bass is thick and full, you don't want sounds to be tinny at one end or too muddy or boomy at the other end. So do check the frequency response graph for any headphones you're thinking of buying. Let's have a look at recording in more detail. Generally, in a home studio setting, all your equipment is in one room. This means if you're going to record using a microphone, you need a set of headphones. You can't monitor recordings through your studio speakers. Firstly, you will probably get into a feedback loop between the mic and the monitors. And secondly, even if that doesn't happen, your mic would be recording whatever sound was coming out of the speakers as well as you. So in this case, you need to have a reasonable pair of closed back headphones for monitoring. These will enable you to hear the backing track and to monitor yourself while at the same time recording without that bleed or leakage we looked at. So some examples of industry standards of closed back headphones at suitable prices for a home recording studio setup. You could have a look at the Sennheiser HD280 Pro, the Sony MDR7506, the Audio-Technica ATH M50X or the Beodynamic DT770 Pro. All of these are hugely popular headphones. If you're on a tight budget then the Status Audio CB1 are an excellent choice too. I'll put links below so you can check out the reviews of all of these and compare and contrast them. If you're mixing and monitoring in an ideal world you'll have a decent pair of studio monitors and a great pair of headphones for mixing and mastering. However if you're just starting to get together your first studio and you have a tight budget then you may only be able to afford a set of headphones. You're not ready to buy the monitors yet. Now I prefer the wider sound and listening comfort of open back headphones and some of the great examples of top selling industry standards again price for home studio budget are the Bear Dynamic DT990 Pro Studio headphones or these AKG K702s which are massively cheaper now than when they were first launched or the Sennheiser HD600 you could go and have a look at those and compare and contrast the reviews. Bear in mind many of the closed back headphones can also be used for mixing as well as monitoring while recording and so it's worth studying the reviews and spec some are excellent if you're only able to buy one set of headphones that you have to use for recording and mixing then go for closed back if you're lucky enough to be able to afford it then having a set of each is a good luxury so let's have a look at some of the advantages of using headphones in your home studio the obvious one is they don't annoy the neighbors or your housemates so obviously you can get on with all your music making and mixing and recording and editing without disturbing anyone else and they cost much less than a, an equivalent set of studio monitors they're essential if you want to monitor yourself while recording and the good thing about mixing with headphones is there's no coloration from room acoustics while mixing like there would be with a set of monitors the tone quality is exactly the same in different environments, so they're very consistent. They're obviously very convenient for on-location monitoring and mixing. And it's easier to hear small changes in the mix through headphones than through monitors. Transients are sharper due to the absence of room reflections. So even if you do most of your mixing using studio monitors, you should also check out the mix in your headphones too. However, there are some disadvantages to using headphones that you should be aware of when you're running your home studio. One of the main ones is they can become uncomfortable. 
and tire you out after long listening sessions. And cheaper headphones have inaccurate tone quality, so spend as much as you can in the first instance. Headphones don't project bass tones through your body like speakers do, so you don't get the same kind of feel for the music as you do when it's coming at you through studio monitors. The bass response varies due to changing headphone pressure, so you have to watch out for that. The other thing is the sound is very much in your head rather than out front. You don't hear any room reverb through headphones, so you may be adding too much or even too little reverb in the mix, so you you must be aware of that. And so it's a good idea, if you can, to listen to your mix after you've made it on headphones on some speaker system. And finally, it can be difficult to judge your stereo spread with headphones because panned signals tend not to sound as far off centre as the same sounds heard over speakers. So if your budget allows, it's really good to combine using headphones and studio monitors for mixing and mastering in your home studio. But it is really likely that you will purchase headphones first. So hopefully this has given you a few things to think about when you're making your decision. If you want to know more, then I've written a complete guide to the best studio headphones. Do have a read. I'll link you below. As usual, comments and questions, please post them below. I love hearing from you. It helps me know what I should talk about next to help you out. Do give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time.